Now, Lagos, which is the commercial nerve center of Nigeria, of course, prides itself with so many positive sites from beautiful edifices to amazing structures. However, there is constantly the sight of weights that are not properly managed or disposed of even in major parts. Now, Plus TV Africa's team takes a look on the reality of this minute, and here is the report. Improper refuse dumping has become a common sight. Elegant edifices, beautiful streets, marred with the ugly sights of refuse. What is the right way to go? Well, if you ask me, dispose them off properly, I would say. We shall call him Abdullahi. He is a waste collector. People like him help to collect our refuse and make our environment cleaner. But just where does it end? This is the final destination. On the one part, our immediate environment is clean. On the other hand, it poses a different form of hazards. This explains why the government assigned waste collectors would refer to people like Abdullahi as causing black spots, meaning they actually dispose refuse in places not allocated or specified for the purpose. Apparently, Abdullahi's way may not be the answer. What has government done? Provisions have been made for the most part for waste collection, at least from what we see around. Improper refuse dumping has been a menace in our society. But as you can see from the view here, it is already so littered around me, my surroundings. Look at the gutters. It is all littered. Has this become a situation that is normal? Have we become so used to dumping refuse, so much so that we do not care anymore? So now, some big men, they are from far away, they are throwing the dustbin here. It's not only people are living here, many people are putting dustbin here. So the, I don't know why they are not more working here again. So please, I'm begging you people, to should beg them to come and to come and continue their work. This refuse here is very causing, it's causing a lot of problems. At least the waste being there, I don't know why they take this waste out of there. Yes. Anybody want to come and throw it there, they will put it there. And it's not good. It's for our heads. Look at where they are selling food. At least we will be healing different type of disease everywhere. And it's not good. And this will cause sickness in our body. Look at children all around over everywhere. Understand? So we want the government to do something, do something about it. See for all the streets, everywhere mess up, everywhere they smell. See, 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 see the waste bin and see dirty, they know if you can't pack them. Government know they help. It's not good now. Nah. What we cannot say is, why is it difficult, for instance, for someone to do this? I use this and do this. It is simple. Why? Are we not caring for our environment? Why are we not caring for where we live? And even by extension, our health. Is it a problem of society? I do not have the answer. Amaka Okoye, Plus TV, Africa. Now joining me in the studio to discuss uh, how to transform this world, uh, waste to wealth is Prince Kwame, who is a plastic waste recycling consultant. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you so much. All right, you've seen that report there. Uh, first and foremost, I know, of course, that part of what you do is being able to recycle plastics and sachet uh, and transform it to different things. Now tell me, what can we do? How do we transform this so-called waste to wealth? All right, so I think the current model is um, probably waste companies go to households, go to community centers, pick up this waste and take it into the landfill where it's bent, buried or incinerated. This system doesn't work again because first of all, it's not sustainable. So uh, one way that this could be handled is through uh, recycling and segregation. So before a waste company comes, there should be segregation bins. So um, segregation bins for organic waste, for plastic waste, for e-waste and various forms of waste. Um, so this is what we call a circular economy, creation of circular economy. So the plastic waste goes to recycling companies, mm -hmm. but bear in mind just um, less than not all forms of plastic are recyclable. So for instance, at Coliba, uh, a company I work with um, full time, what they do with the plastic waste is they actually work with two streams of waste. 
which is the sachet waste for your sachet water. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually recycled into pellets and then exported for companies, specifically companies that do new things with them. So make mm -hmm. chairs and make um, plastic chairs from them and all that. Um, second option is a bottle, which is a PET bottle. So these are called a Nestle drinking water bottles. Mm -hmm. And those ones are converted again into various items, which is used for bottle to bottle. So it's uh, recycled back into bottle and also bottle to fiber. So mostly companies like Peppermint in Germany, most of the airline seats and your jacket polyester is made from PET. So oh, your clothing. So it's also bottle to clothes, which is also in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. So that the waste stream on the landfill is massively reduced. So I think these are sustainable ways we can see how that we can transform mm -hmm. and reduce those waste mm -hmm. in the value chain. Okay, so having said that, uh, basically, I mean, I was uh, there and I saw what you do in Ghana. And now speak to me how this has materialized also into a big chain of business. Um, so and causing employment also. Awesome. So, for instance, um, in Ghana, um, there is a massive collection done by waste pickers. Um, the recycling sector is informal, it's mm -hmm. unstructured. So, um, Ghana recycles less than 10% of the plastic waste. And this 10%, 90% of this is recycled by waste pickers. And they wake up typically around 5 a.m., move around. Waste picking is the only job that doesn't require capital. Mm -hmm. It is surprising that there's a huge amount of recycling happening in the rural communities than in the developed communities communities. Mm -hmm. This would be shocking because in Ghana, I don't know about Lagos, but in Ghana, what I know is that um, people segregate their waste because they know an old woman will come, a middle man will come and pay for it. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the environment, but they know that they are segregating because they need to survive, they need to earn money. But in irony, they are protecting the environment. Mm -hmm. But in middle and high income households, waste companies don't provide those services, so everything goes in the same beam, ends up in a landfill. The same waste speaker comes back for that same trash that fleed from the middle and high income household and then pick them up because they don't need revenue. So what our business model is doing, it has escalated, it's created more jobs mm -hmm. in the sense that we are willing our segregation programs. So waste pickers now move out from the landfills and can connect to households that are segregating their waste. And now they have access to non-polluted waste, which is much more of high value so they are paid more for it which is mm -hmm. high income for them and then there's consistent pickup of this waste so there is more job creation because of that transformation mm -hmm. and segregation of waste all right that's great and then finally how can this be replicated you know we know there are so many conversations now about caring for the earth it's, it's a global uh, issue now so mm -hmm. how can this be replicated in other parts of africa you think i think it's the same problem across west africa mm -hmm. um so look at ghana to nigeria nigeria to burkina faso is the same waste problem. So I think there are already waste pickers on the ground. Mm -hmm. What is involved is um, a sort of innovation for startups and new businesses and even waste companies to leverage on these um, network of waste pickers and see how to formalize their role. And must, because waste companies alone cannot address this problem. So mm -hmm. at Coliva, the company we work with, they use a tech support system, which is a SMS based and a mobile platform to put recycling services at fingers, people's fingertips, which connect waste pickers to these services. Mm -hmm. And so the work is not just on generic waste, waste companies. So mm -hmm. this can be easily replicated with technology and with the right people on the ground. Thank you so very much, Kwame, for so joining much. me and sharing your thoughts there.